Hello and welcome to SEO Cash Flow. This is a, I would say monthly, but it depends type of column that I do with Olga. So my name is Miriam and both of us are SEO consultants and we answer some common questions that nobody really talks about when, you know, you get started freelancing or build your own agency. So what's the topic today, Olga? So our topic is how to increase prices when there are other options which are way more cheaper. And why would you even care if there are cheaper options out there, though? Because you probably want to save money, want to spend less. Hi, Jess. Hi, I'm so sorry. So that's a very Canadian way of introducing yourself. Um, you have ended up in SEO cash flow, our Recording, monthly, yeah. Yeah, our monthly column where we talk about things. So you are being um kidnapped. And yes. as an SEO consultant, <laughs> I'm going to ask you what we're talking well, I'm going to ask you a question, and it's the topic we're talking about, which is how do you raise your prices when there are more um, affordable options out there and we were at the start of this discussion which was why should you even care there are cheaper options out there um well i would say because you have the experience um you can you can easily go to somebody who's cheaper but um i i would question if they're a going to be as transparent as you're going to be um, they're going to have as much knowledge as you have, um, and they're going to have as much experience as you have. I think it's that old saying of like, um, you could hire somebody to do something, but like, what kind of work are you going to get out of that? Like you can go to Fiverr. Sure. Cool. Um, but anybody could go on Fiverr at this point. Um, it's easier to get onto Fiverr than it is to like make a coffee these days. Right. I, oh I think we should have a show where we ask five people on Fiverr to do an SEO audit and just get angry at the results because I've never been happy at a Fiverr SEO audit that my clients would show me. And it, it ties into something else. So the reason why I asked Olga, like, why should you even care who's expensive or cheaper than you? If you have a client telling you, we really like working with you, however, so-and-so has a cheaper agency. Is this something that worries either of you? Has this happened to you and how did you handle it? It happened for me multiple times when someone just wanted an audit or wanted monthly SEO. And when I told them the price and they said, but, but I can get this like three times cheaper, for example. And then I usually say, you either want quality and expertise or quantity and it's up to you. And some people never got back to me. Others got back after some time, for example. They had bad experience and then they said, okay, I think I know that I have to pay more to, to get this level of service instead of like having that level of service. So I would say the quality of our work, our expertise, the fact that we are specialized in something, we are not like general generalists. It's also something that is valuable way more what, what, what about I you uh it, yeah same thing is i'm i'm not here playing the short game um i'm in it for the long haul so uh i've kind of like set it free and if it doesn't come back then it's not worth serving you <laughs> and, and i i don't want to work with those people who want to like do that as well i've worked with a bunch of people who um i've given them all the information and they're more than happy to go on, along and implement it as well um, and I'm happy to see their success, um, but uh, I'm I'm happy to stay with the people who are, are looking for a long-term relationship as much as it sounds like a long-term relationship, like I have an actual long-term relationship, but like with clients as well, right? Um, I'm looking for the long game, not just for the short game. So very much the same experience as Olga. Totally see, agree. I'm different. I'm not a long game person at all. So let me explain. The clients that I have that are long term, and I'm like realizing as I'm talking that I have had some clients for like ongoing eight years now. So I'm telling you, I'm not in it for the long haul. And I'm realizing there's a few that are <laughs> here. But ultimately, there's 
there's multiple things we have to talk about. So there's the first one, which is how do you raise your prices when there are more affordable options available when you have existing clients? So I think that Jess will get back to you for this, Olga, as well, because you're in it for the long haul. You've done this. You've raised your prices and people are still around. And I'm more of a person that will keep raising my prices every year. And I keep doing audits for people who are upset at their agency, upset at their results or have a problem. I'm the fix it person. I'm, I'm the one that's going to diagnose the problem and tell you potentially how to fix it. Okay. I do not enjoy implementing anything. I will guide a team to implement it. I'm a fractional SEO director. Go for it. I am not implementing anything anywhere. Do not give me access to your CMS, your GitHub, your Google Drive. It's not happening. Okay, now that I said this, there's a lot of agencies that offer free audits to get the client long term. And here I am selling something that is given for free. So my point of view has been a tad different from both of yours, which is if you came to me, there's a reason. I'm not number one on um, SEO agency Montreal. I'm not number one on many, many of the queries that people would look for, for my services. So why are people coming? They heard about me. I've been recommended. My name has popped up enough times that they're paying attention or they've seen my social media posts or like, I want to work with this person. So right off the bat, I'm not in the same price range. I'm not here to convince you. You already want to work with me for your own reasons. Let's figure out what those reasons are. So this is me telling you in, you know, longer form, leverage your social proof. There's other people recommending me. I'm visible. I've done things that justify this. So it's the same for both of you, right? Totally, you're, totally. You're, you're Olga, like I knew you before I met you. Okay. That that's how <laughs> famous you are. <laughs> that's cool. I knew both of you <laughs> before I met you as well. <laughs> <laughs> see, see? Social proof. So <laughs> this this is super important. The second thing is. I don't like it when people waste my time. My time is money. Oh, you would love me for to do this work for you and in this format and there's your previous agency did this and you got more hours. I try more and more to charge on the value that I bring versus the amount of time. So now I tell people politely, if you want an SEO audit with me at the bare minimum, okay? If you do not have $2,500, we ain't talking. You're not my client. Yeah. Oh, so you can get it cheaper. Good. Very good. I am so glad for it. Go for it. In the sense that like, maybe you need someone cheaper. Maybe you need someone more junior. It's fine. I raised my prices because I raised the value that I brought. It was a conscious effort. So... It's kind of like a locksmith. If you're locked out of your house on a Sunday at 10 p.m. at night, if they're going to cost $400, you don't expect them to take 10 hours, explain to you how locks work, show you how they did it. You just want to get in in 10 minutes, right? And be safe. Same for the value that I bring. So now I have changed the way I do things. And we talked about this with Olga. I do video audits. You want 15 minutes to 45 minutes of pure insights that will get you started, move the needle. You can pay for that. Or you could pay me to make it pretty in a PowerPoint because you're a big corporation. I can do that as well. But you're still paying for my time there. Bless for my brain. So extracting the value is very, very important. So... This is something a bit tricky, and I'm going to be asking you, like, Jess, how do you communicate your value to potential clients? Um, I, uh, I've shifted over the years, um, but I, uh, I'm a little bit different than you, Miriam, because I, uh, I love the implementation side. Um, so I, <laughs> I love that I like for to, you. 
Yeah. So I like to get my hands in there. I like to get dirty, you know. I like to stay in touch with all the on-page stuff. I still like to to make sure that everything's not indexed where it shouldn't be. I was literally doing that this morning for somebody for a Webflow site. So um, my pitch is that I used to be a developer and I still love looking at code. Um, so I still love the technical side of things. And that's, that's my, that's usually my pitch. And now these days I work with somebody who loves content. So I found somebody who loves doing the stuff that I don't love doing as much. Um, and the two of us work together really well. They don't like to be on the front. They don't like to have their face seen. They don't like to be in the front at all. So it actually works out well for the two of us. <laughs> um, and it's forcing me to be in the front a little more. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, but it uh, it works to parallel path because I can't do I can't go really technical without having somebody who's on the content side, right? Like we need to have both of those things running, um, and that's how we pitch it. So he's he's really good at at like making briefs and refreshing content um, and talking all that side, and then I can get into your CMS. And I have time to tinker away and no index things here or redirect here or uh, tell you that your page speed score is garbage and you need to remove all of your Loom videos from your homepage because that's a piece of garbage you shouldn't have on your homepage. <laughs> uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, so then uh, our audits end up being that. And then uh, something that Miriam and I have talked about a bunch before is we try to surface up the highest things that they can do. Um, but if they don't want to do it, uh, we try to build it in a way that we can port it directly into this, their CRM or their CM, whatever the thing is that they use to build out whatever it is, be it Asana, Trello, Jira. Their, their ticket system. Happiness. But yeah. What you have described, and you've done it quite well, is that you highlight the benefits of your approach. You're like, yes. hey, you want to work with the next developer? Go for it. You want to work with a team that actually understands content and tech? Let's go. So I'm going to ask you the same question, Olga. How do you highlight the benefits of working with you to justify your price? To be honest, this may sound a little bit arrogant, but I, no, don't, go. I don't really like pitch clients at all. I have like, I just have my website where I share the things I do and I have, and I have my YouTube, stuff like that. And on my website, in many places, I have it written like in bold that I don't sell SEO and I only work with few select clients who understand the value of SEO and who treat SEO as an investment. And in most cases, people who reach out to me are ready for like paying more than, than would pay on Fiverr. So a few who, who want to pay less, of course, they never like get back to me after I, I tell them prices or they say I'm crazy or something like that. This happened as well. But that's all I do. I simply have it written very, very clearly on my website in many, many places where, where I talk about my, my services. And for now, it has been working for me. So... I think this is very important. It gets back to, once again, communicating value through pricing. This is very important. So what this means is there is a value that we tie to pricing. Sometimes we say, okay, I paid a lot of money for this and it doesn't work, aka most mascaras I try. So <laughs> this is a thing where you like can't necessarily always trust stuff, but there's some solid brands that, you know, they're worth the money if you are the right person. So this is what it all boils down to. You have to be able to communicate your value and explain, hey, I spent 15 years learning all of this and I'm distilling everything that I know to apply it to your own specific situation. This is not me giving you a checklist that I borrowed on the internet. I know exactly what you need. And me knowing exactly what you need, that comes with a price. I'm saving you time because I invested that time in me. Now you pay for it. So when it comes to giving prices, it's great. We gave great advice. But the truth is, even today, I still have clients that come to me with like their eyes wide and they're like, I heard about you through this podcast or I have some that have um, 
found out about me because they were following a free course I was giving because I have deals with sort of mentorship places and I like mentoring people. And they are disconnected from anything that I have as a consultant. They don't know my pricing. They don't know my services. They just know I want to work with you because you're my first contact into this world. And I have to politely potentially break their heart by going, I'm expensive. So whenever people are like, I'd like you to do this and do that and do that. I'm like, you can find someone that is much better at copy than I am. And that costs less. So I'm just going to do a little shout out to um, Alice Rowan, um, a wonderful copywriter. You can always hire them. Look for them online. They have a lot of social proof saying they're good. So it's very, very important to know what you do and what you don't do. So you are confident in your pricing. So one of the things that I have when I feel bad about breaking potentially someone's heart with my pricing is that I make a joke. I'm not saying it's the best. I'm just saying that I have little coping mechanisms that help me not end up lowering my price because I feel bad, which a lot of people try to get you yeah. to do. I look at them and I go, I'm going to be honest with you. I have reached an hourly rate that is similar to a very good divorce lawyer in my town. And usually that gets them laughing. See, you see Jess going, okay. Cause whenever you feel like divorce lawyer, you know, the cost a lot, you know, oh, yeah. But you, yep. but you also know that you should not divorce without a good divorce lawyer. Like that is yep. not a thing you do. So my analogy makes sense. Find something that works for you and makes you feel confident. So you don't end up going uh, 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 and negotiating the price. Another element is, oh, but do you have a special price for nonprofits, for tiny companies, for um, let's say pigeon led uh initiatives and my yes. answer usually is you, you do have a pigeon ones pigeon i do <laughs> all so, the pigeon ones yeah <laughs> let, let it be known if you have a pigeon business or if you know anything about pigeons a good pigeon compliment or comment will get you far with yeah. olga yeah good to know so i have explained to people that i invest my time in incubators to help my community I do not have special pricing for nonprofits, but I do give my time for specific workshops, meaning that if you want my free time or if you want like a lower rate, there are places to go. But these places will ask you to do a lot of work up front to make sure you're the right fit to receive that service. AK, you can't barge in and offer me coffee for this. No. It's highly regulated. And this way I can say either you fit into this and you get the lower price of the free, or you do not, in which case you need a consultant, honey. And I'm here for that, but that's a different rate. And here's a concrete bonus. If your clients want you and don't have the funds, they can always find a government grant, a government initiative, a program yeah. that will help them. So yeah. make sure that you let them know, hey, do the homework. I will like build out the offer for you. I'm helping you make sure you get the money to pay me, but it's not my job to get the money. It's yours. So once again, these are all tactics that I use concretely to justify my price without feeling awkward about it and yes Jess I was gonna say uh, government grants are some of my favorite ways to to have clients too because then you get to work with the people who actually care about what's happening on their website and uh they they're like the smaller ones like the small business ones but they're paying you at the rate that's your own rate that is mm -hmm. that is my favorite if they come in and they're like oh we got a government grant we can hire you now Oh, that makes me feel so happy. <laughs> I love, I'm like, sign on the dotted line. Let's do this. This is happiness. And then you can spend your time doing things that are actually amazing for them. And I've got some of my best clients from government work. I love it. Big fan. Same here. So Olga, this may not be a reality for you yet. Who knows? But ultimately, it's one of those things where your value doesn't change. The no. way you communicate your value doesn't change, but you understand your audience. You can help them make the right choice and like carve out 
resources to make the right choice. So you also need to understand your audience, like who you're selling stuff to. So if I have somebody at telling me, this happens to me often, I have a startup and I'm looking for a partner that will stop working for six months to dedicate their lives to the startup. No, the answer is thank you very much. Sounds wonderful. You already wasted my time by talking to me for 20 minutes about yourself and your idea, but no. So an additional thing that I will always politely say to people who ask this is I say, I am the primary um, income in my household. I'm not able to make such adjustments, which is a very polite way of saying hell no. So concretely, um, have you ever felt bad, Olga, about somebody coming to you going, hey, actually, you're crazy. I can't hire you. This is not okay. Have you ever felt bad that you couldn't accommodate them? Maybe once I had such a situation. And back then, this this wasn't like a very high price. Maybe back then it was a high price for me. Now, I wouldn't say it is high, but this person still was saying that. But I can hire an SEO agency and then they would be way cheaper. And we were debating for a long time. He wanted like more proofs. He wanted me to send him like some other sites I worked on. And I really, and I spent a lot of time with, with that going back and forth. And then he finally said, oh, but I found this agency is better, is better. He, that's what he thought. And he didn't sign up for me, which, which I think now is very cool that he didn't. But then I felt like bad that I wasted so much time with those negotiations. I have a rule for this. I tell people, you get your audit done somewhere else and then you want to send me the audit so I can like build upon it. You have to pay for a new audit. I don't do that. Yeah, I I exactly had this situation like two days ago. Yeah. And this is what I said. I have to have my own audit. (laughs) So... I think we all agree on this. There's this notion of like, you're scared to increase your prices. And I'm at divorce lawyer levels, okay? And I still have people who want to work with me. And I still have small brands that work with me because they have grants, okay? This works. You don't have to feel like if I bring up my prices, I'm going to cut myself off of cool clients. No, no, that's not how it works. So concretely... I think that all of us today, you don't regret charging more, right? No. You still have business going, right? Okay, so now that we see like three relaxed human beings in the screen, hi to the person who's watching this because I know there's a few of you. I get feedback, okay? We are the show that people watch in secret. I realize that. So... You can absolutely raise your prices. You don't feel bad about this, okay? You gain confidence, you practice, you have multiple cases, potential new client, existing client, client that has been referred to you by someone you worked with five years ago who's not aware that you have increased your prices. You still need to figure out a way to raise your price. Do not end up keeping clients where you're like, okay, so... I now charge, let's say, $250, but this client is an old client. They come back every year. They're at $50 an hour. I'm still going to, it doesn't work. You need to always make sure that you increase your prices for everyone. So you can have a plan where maybe it will take a year for the other client that's like super low to rise up. But you need to make sure that everyone catches up to your new value. And you'll see. As you've seen with Jess and Olga here and myself, once you raise the price, you feel good. You know you're worth it. You feel comfortable after a few months. You even forget your old rate, okay? Like people come to you going, I expected this to be cheaper. And you're going, in what world? (laughs) So you will get to that point, okay? It's fine. And none of us have died. None of us have lost our businesses over raising our fees. However, if you do not have social proof, if you do not bring value, if you do not understand your audience, and if you can't figure out a way to highlight the benefits of your approach, your own way of doing things, 
you will run into problems. The price is not the problem usually. It's those elements we listed together. So any other advice we should have, folks? Maybe I would ask you about how would you approach existing clients with this price change? How would you like justify that you are basically going to do the same next year, but you want to increase the price by, let's say, 10, 20%? How would you say it to your client? So, Jess, do you want to go first? Because mine is going to be like a tank rolling in. Like, I, I'm very blunt. Um, I've, I've done it graciously. I think I'm a little more uh, uh, compliment sandwich about it. Um, that, you know, just like uh, you when you work in a job, you try to get yourself a raise every year and, and things get more expensive and where you're in a certain economic situation. And I usually try to give people a heads up like a couple months. Um, and I just I try to be understandable, you know, like that this is what's happening and I'm going to be implementing this as of this date and I'd love to have a conversation about it. Because, you know, given the economic situations, it's understandable. But also, uh, this is what's happening. I, I, I'm, I'm rolling my eyes in the back of my head because I think you're way too nice. Like, it's so I painful am. to see you be this nice. Let's, <laughs> yeah. let's, let's take a minute. So you need to be like Jess, but have me on your shoulder whispering aggressive things to you so remember highlighting the benefits of your approach maybe your approach has switched maybe you learned a few things maybe you can improve things maybe there's some stuff that used to take a lot longer but thanks to you it's going faster so you're like hey now that we have like the minimum viable product or that we have proven that this method framework process works this is awesome we can leverage this and continue and by the way we can free up some more time to do this 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 which is a new type of service or we're going more in depth. As a side note, I'm raising my prices. We're going in a new direction. I'm leveling you up with the rest of my clients. Now, here, yeah, thank you. So what am I showing? I'm showing two things. I'm showing, hey, I already pr proved that I, I work well with you, that I saved you time and money, okay? Now we're doing something new. It's not the same old. The reason why we work together is because I'm helping you evolve, scale, grow. So we're doing something different, more technical, more whatever, leveling you up to my current pricing for that. Next step. If I've been working with a client for seven years, you can bet I know things that they have forgotten. Things that I told them to document that they did not. Things that they cannot explain even if they have documentation. They know that I know where they're going. So the more time you spend with a client, the more value you bring them right? So the more value you bring, why, what, wait, wait. So we've been together for seven, eight years and you want me to remain cheaper because I invested time in knowing everything that you do? Oh, that's not how this works. That, that leads normally to divorce. Okay. Let's not do that. <laughs> let's, let's stay proactive. So I need everyone listening to this to be in that mindset of I bring value, I bring tangible value and I get paid for it. And don't forget something else. Um, how can I say this politely? People pay for humans. A lot of people, I don't ask me why, but Olga is one of my huge champions, so is Jess. People really enjoy the human side of working with me. And sometimes I'm even paid to be an emotional support parrot while my client just complains about processes not working. And I get paid like a divorce lawyer to listen to that. And sometimes I like to remind them, like, you could be paying me to do things. And they're like, oh, we are doing things. This is, this is helping me. <laughs> and that's when you realize there's a difference between, like, the person paying your check at the end of the month and the person actually hiring you. So once again, it gets back to... Get really comfortable and confident understanding what your audience needs, what they want. Mm. Yes. Can I put in one point, though? While you're doing that with all of those wonderful people, make sure you still have an in with the billing department, accounting department. <laughs> make <laughs> friends with the accounting department so that your check's still clear. Because I've sat on, uh, I've, I've 
I've been on first name basis with accounting departments who I'm like, it's Jess calling. I'm calling again. Hi, how are you? Oh, how's your daughter doing? You know, <laughs> like um, to be able to get paid. So make sure you still have that relationship going with the accounting department while you're, um, you know, doing that with all this, the other people. Great point. <laughs> this this yeah. brings me to one last point. Thanks to you, Jess. You know, it's annoying to enter a new vendor if you're a big corporation, like you need to fill out a form, you need to set up the payment, you need to enter them in the system, onboard them onto how things work. They already did the work with you. All they need to do is update the thing. That's it. Hiring someone new is also going to be a little bit more annoying because you need to onboard them. So feel comfortable with the billing department, get friends with them, but also know, hey, that's another advantage in your favor. So is there anything else we should do while we wrap up? Any other advice? Let me think. I have one last one. Like if you're competing on price, you haven't figured out your value. You haven't figured out like how totally. things work, truly. Totally. And well, um, I'm going to ask you, Olga, so if we were to say you're expensive, how expensive are you in terms of other professions? Mm, depending on the type of service, I would say it is similar to lawyer services as well. Yes. <laughs> Another one we could talk about is dentists, because, yeah. you know, teeth, you can't replace them that easily. And it's for life. It's a long term thing. So either lawyer dentist anything that's kind of like painful but you need that's us <laughs> yeah totally <laughs> well thank you very much for coming to seo cash flow we hope that this has been useful to you because these are the things that nobody really talks about in all the articles that talk about how you too can be your own boss so yeah, totally thanks them. everyone and thank you miriam for your wonderful rents Bye-bye. <laughs>